uh, Catherine Egelbrecht, uh, actually she was spoken to by, by Griff Jenkins. Now she's the founder of the King Street Patriots and she was at the hearing today testifying as the congressman said and this is what she said to Griff Jenkins. Ms. Egelbrecht, thanks for joining us. What is your story? Why are you here in Washington today? I'm here because I was asked to come give a testimony of, uh, of my life over the last three years, which has involved all manner, 15 plus different audits and investigations among uh, four different federal agencies. And you were a businesswoman for a number of years, and then all of a sudden you became what you believe is a target of political motivation. Explain to me. Well, prior to my involvement with the Tea Party, prior to my involvement starting True the Vote and King Street Patriots, um, uh, the government didn't really have much interest in, in me and my family other than just paying taxes. After filing those nonprofit applications, everything changed. And it's since then that there has been an onslaught of inquiries from the federal government that um, to this point have not been addressed. When you say an onslaught, who has uh, uh, targeted you or, or what, what sort of uh, challenges have you gone through? Uh, the FBI has visited us on six occasions. Um, the uh, IRS has, has audited my personal and business uh, finances. Um, OSHA has paid our company a, biz uh, a visit. Uh, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms has come out for in two consecutive years to do audits. Um, the, the Texas branch of the EPA uh, came out to do uh, an unplanned audit and inspection. All of these things they have the, the, the right to do, and we honored and worked with every single agency, but the question remains not, not that they came, but who pointed them at us. You even received letters, I understand, from the ranking member, Elijah Cummings. Yes, sir. What did Mr. Cummings send you? He asked to subpoena documents of True the Vote, wanted to know um, about all of our practices and, and alleged things that we simply weren't doing, which makes it very hard to um, to defend because you can't really defend the negative. He was asserting things that were simply fantasy. Much has been made about the president's comments in an interview with Bill O'Reilly about not a smidgen of corruption here. How do you respond to that? It's a, it's a sad statement from our commander in chief. What do you want the American people to hear? What, what do you want them to do? I want them to remember who we are. The government works for us. It is of the people and we should not be silent. Congressman, before this woman became part of the Tea Party, um, she had never been audited. She has had 15 audited, audits, 14 fe four federal agencies, OSHA, FBI has been out to her six times, IRS audit, B Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms, and she's even gotten a letter from a Democratic congressman about this. Coincidence? Oh, boy, it's hard to argue that's a coincidence. And, you know, Greta, we ought to be incentivizing people like Ms. Engelbrecht to, to get involved in, in the political discourse. And, and after 20 years of inactivity, to, to decide you really want to get involved and do something on behalf of your country, to be greeted with that, uh, that's why I was mad. I had just met her uh, this morning before the hearing. And hearing her story and Ms. Garrison's story, Greta, it would make you mad, too. That's not what we want. That's not the message to send to people who are contemplating getting involved in political discourse. I'm speaking to a school tomorrow. I suspect half may be Republicans, half may be Democrats. How foolish would it be for me to, dis to discourage people who don't agree with me politically from getting involved in political discourse. We should encourage everybody to do it. You, you know, uh, Congressman, to me, it's like it's, there's a zero chance this is a coincidence. Zero chance. The minute the minute she got involved with Tea Party politics, suddenly, I mean, the FBI six times to visit her, that's stunning. And the first time she gets audited personally and professionally or business, that's absolutely stunning and terrifying. I mean, when you go through this list, all of a sudden, and, and the only thing that's changed is she's become a Tea Party member. That's the only thing. Otherwise, she was just a businesswoman uninvolved. I mean, it's terrifying when this happens. Uh, it is, and you can ex uh, understand the frustration of Jimmy Jordan and others when after six months and having 12 people assigned to, quote, investigate it, she hasn't even been interviewed. Now, the FBI went and talked to her when she was politically active, but they haven't talked to her about her allegations of criminal wrongdoing against the IRS. That's what's so frustrating is they'll talk to her to try to silence her and chill her free speech, but they won't talk to her when she uh, makes allegations against the IRS. So for the president to say what he said Sunday, I would encourage him to talk to her and talk to Ms. Garrison and talk to some of the other victims that I have talked to for the last six months before he concludes that there's not a smidgen of corruption.
You know, when people say that during the midst of, a, of an investigation, when people are obviously hurting, it seems so smug to me. I mean, you really don't get what people go through. You know, maybe you've never been visited by the IRS or the FBI, but when someone like this poor woman who seems like a good law-abiding woman, I don't know, you know, I, I don't know her, but when I hear what she has gone through since becoming a Tea Party member, it's hard not to be really, really suspicious. It ought to make you no longer a Republican and no longer a Democrat, but just a fellow citizen that is outraged that any of your fellow citizens would be treated that way by a government agency, and in her case, multiple government agencies. But you know what happens in Washington, Greta? Everybody retreats and puts on their uniform, and if they're a Democrat, they're going to defend the administration. If they're a Republican, they're going to attack it. I hope I live long enough to see a Democrat or Republican stand up and criticize their own administration for doing something as unconscionable as this. And if I live long enough to see a Republican attorney general, I promise you I'll do it. Well, I hope sometime, I know one of the problems you and I have discussed this before, is that there's such reluctance on the part of Republicans on the Hill, and you, you own the House, I mean, you're the dominant party, to issue subpoenas, because I tell you, subpoenas would be flying out of my office uh, if I had the authority. I know you're not a chairman and you can't do that, but I tell you, this investigation should move a lot faster, subpoenas should be flying, and you can get every single document you want, and when people don't comply with the document, don't comply with the subpoena, that you take action, because no American should suffer like that woman. That is the world you and I are used to, subpoenas and you get answers. You would be just as frustrated as I am if you were in Congress, Greta, so don't run. <laughs> That's a, good advice. I'll keep that in mind. Congressman, thank you, sir.